Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the commencement ceremony for the University of Oklahoma College of Medicine's OUTU School of Community Medicine, Class of 2020. I'm Dr. James Herman, Dean of the School of Community Medicine. We had hoped and planned to be celebrating this day together in person, and although we were not able to hold the ceremony in its typical fashion, this day is no less important and special. Today, 27 dedicated and bright individuals are entering a noble profession. We are pleased that all of you are joining us remotely for this unique ceremony celebrating the accomplishments of this year's School of Community Medicine graduates. At this time, I'd like to introduce one of our graduates, Mitchell McCain, who will lead us in the National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave thank you mitch now i'd like to take a moment to recognize the administration faculty and staff who have supported the graduates on this journey. Your contributions to their education are greatly valued. Each of you in the graduating class knows that you did not get to this day alone. We must take this opportunity to recognize those whose support contributed significantly to the success of our medical students. To the parents, spouses, other family members, friends and faculty joining us today, on behalf of the School of Medicine and the graduating class, we give a heartfelt thank you. Thank you for your encouragement, sacrifice, and unwavering support. We are grateful for your loyalty to these medical students, now these young doctors. Graduates, as I pause, I ask you to please join me in taking a moment to reflect on your appreciation of all of those who supported and helped you along the way. Well, class of 2020, the day has finally arrived, the culmination of your medical school education and the beginning of the next phase of your continuing medical education and training. During your four years here, this class has been witness to many exciting developments and changes in medicine and in our medical school. But most important has been the transformation that has occurred in each and every one of you during your journey as a medical student. You have demonstrated outstanding commitment to your medical studies and performed extremely well. This is a class that has shared excitement, anxiety, stress, intellectual and emotional growing pains, at times exhaustion, relief, and elation, and they are stronger and closer because of sharing those experiences and emotions. They have demonstrated extraordinary commitment to the needs of people less fortunate than them. Their level of volunteerism is remarkable, and they have exhibited outstanding professionalism and leadership. Today you become graduates and alumni of the School of Community Medicine. You are graduating and becoming physicians in a demanding time in our state, our country, and our world as it confronts the COVID-19 pandemic. Your class will face challenges in the days and months ahead, but we are assured that you are up to the challenge as you have made an indelible and positive mark on our School of Community Medicine and on each other. I congratulate the class of 2020 on their achievements and success in reaching this critical milestone in their careers. And the faculty of the college joins me in expressing how proud we are of you today. It is now my pleasure to introduce our 2020 commencement speaker. Dr. Elmas Beal is Professor of Community Medicine and Associate Dean for Medical Education in the College of Health Sciences at the University of Tulsa. 
He is also a member of the faculty in the OU-TU College of Medicine. During his five short years in Tulsa, Dr. Beal has developed close ties with the students, faculty members, and staff here on the Schusterman campus and is regarded as a favorite professor among students. These graduates know him best as their anatomy professor. He's also the founding director of the Early Careers in Community Medicine program at the University of Tulsa, a program that provides early admission to the OU College of Medicine for up to five TU graduates each year. In fact, two members of the founding class will be the first to matriculate into the School of Community Medicine this August. Dr. Beal grew up in Midwest City, Oklahoma, received his undergraduate degree from Oklahoma State University in 1970, and earned his PhD degree from Baylor College of Medicine in 1977. After postdoctoral training in the Diabetes Endocrinology Research Center at the University of Iowa, he joined the faculty of the Texas Tech University School of Medicine in Lubbock, Texas, where he was an anatomy educator and an NIH-funded researcher from 1984 to 2008. Prior to joining the OUTU School of Community Medicine, Dr. Beal served as a founding faculty member of a new Texas Tech School of Medicine in El Paso from 2008 to 2015. After many years of serving as an admired and beloved educator, Dr. Beal is retiring at the end of this academic year to enjoy more time with his family. He will be greatly missed at the University of Tulsa and at the School of Community Medicine, and his contributions will be remembered and appreciated. I am extremely pleased to introduce our 2020 commencement speaker, Dr. Almas Beal. Members of the class of 2020, Dean Herman, faculty and staff, family and friends of the graduates, thank you for the honor of speaking to you today. Graduates, you are the second class to graduate from the four-year medical school here in Tulsa. Thanks to your attitudes and small class size, you formed a tight-knit group. You took care of each other as you shared the experience of drinking from a fire plug. In a sense, you became a family. Though my current job has come at the end of my career, I regard it really as the best job of my life because of you, your fellow students, and the faculty and staff that guide and support you. We, you and I, worked elbow to elbow in the anatomy lab where you earned my admiration, respect, and trust, which will make addressing you as doctor all the more special in a short while. We first met at Summer Institute where I took your pictures with my iPhone. I'm pretty sure you were all a bit baffled as to who I was and what I planned to do with those pictures, but you consented to let it happen. It helped me quickly learn your names, and now I have a Google Photos album that will help me remember you well into the future. Thanks for indulging me. Now I want to address those of you who have provided support systems for these graduates. I'm referring to the families, significant others, and close friends. You are the ones who have loved, rooted for, and fretted over these graduates. We, the faculty and staff, honor you and thank you for loaning us your loved ones for these past few years. Parents, at the beginning, we promised to continue nurturing the potentials you saw early on in your son or daughter. We've certainly tried, though I fear there were times when you thought we were undoing your efforts. Spouses, sweethearts, and children, we pay particular tribute to you you have learned well the lessons of sacrifice and delayed gratification. You felt the absences, the distractions, the concerns for health and well-being. You likewise must have seen us not as mentors, but as tormentors. Thank you for your forbearance. The experience has not been easy, but I hope you find it has been worth it. I know that my wife and I have drawn closer and tougher over the years thanks to our struggles. Now back to you graduates. This is certainly a time for feeling satisfaction and pride in your accomplishment. Each of you knows you didn't get here alone, but you were on the front lines. This has been a demanding journey that started with a dream way back when to your journey as pre-med students 
to nervous applicants, to excited matriculants, to book-weary second years, to bone-weary third years, and then to the anxious relaxation of the fourth year. You now look forward to the next phase of your education where somebody will finally give you some remuneration for your labors. But don't calculate your hourly wage. When I saw the match list, it filled me with pride and excitement about your next adventures. I see that 14 of you will be staying in Oklahoma, nine right here in Tulsa, while the rest of you will move to other states. So let me take advantage of this opportunity to give you four bits of fatherly advice. Number one is grow where you're planted. Two, choose to be happy. Three, take care of yourself, your family, and your friends. And four, pay attention to surprises. My first bit of advice, grow where you're planted, is something I ignored for many, many years, way too many years. I grew up in Oklahoma, always wanting to be somewhere else. My wife and I moved to Lubbock, Texas for our first real job, but with the attitude that we would move on to greater things within five years. One day I was complaining about the dryness and flatness of Lubbock to one of my colleagues who replied, we should all grow where we're planted. His words surprised me and made me notice for the first time the beauty of the land with its canyons and sunsets, the wonderful people of the high plains of West Texas. We lived a total of 24 years in Lubbock and loved it. My wife and I moved back to Oklahoma five years ago after 45 years of living elsewhere. Nashville, Houston, Iowa City, Lubbock, Lausanne, Switzerland, and El Paso, Texas. Frankly, I don't know why I didn't care for Oklahoma, and I'm glad we're back. Perhaps you might think your next destination is temporary, but if you live like it will be your home from now on, my bet is that you and those around you will be happier. My second bit of advice, choose to be happy is similar to the first, in that it is also a conscious choice of attitude. Something as simple as choosing to smile more than you frown can be a huge step in being happy. I have tried to meet the world each day with a positive attitude and a smile, and I'm certain that it has made me a happier and more contented person. I had a colleague at Texas Tech in El Paso, a pediatric surgeon, who is one of the happiest people I know. With his family, he had lived in Africa as a medical missionary for almost two decades. He enjoyed mentoring students and was regularly invited to share his experiences with various student groups. His talks motivated many medical students to be medical missionaries, but he always cautioned them, if you go, discomfort and inconvenience are inevitable but misery is optional. What a great example of growing where you're planted and choosing to be happy. My third bit of advice is take care of yourself, your family, and your friends. I will never forget a time when my youngest daughter won first place in her middle school science fair. I was told that one of her judges, who knew me, asked, are you going to become a scientist like your dad? Her answer was an emphatic, no, he's never home. Ouch. The profession you are entering is demanding and you're obligated to take care of your patients. So be empathetic, be their advocate, be kind, listen to them. Think deeply about them and work hard to help them live happy lives, but don't neglect yourself and your relationships. Try to eat healthy foods, exercise, enjoy a hobby. Spend regular quality time with your family and friends. Find a balance between work life and home life. It can be done. My last bit of advice is to pay attention to surprises 
to things that make you go, hmm. I'll illustrate with some examples. That statement my daughter made about me never being at home surprised me, but it got my attention and it caused me to seek a balance between my work and my family's needs. Here's an example that may have surprised you too when you first heard it. The U.S. healthcare system is the most expensive and least effective among almost 30 comparable countries. What? That surprise showed me that we all need to be educated advocates to help fix the system. Here's a surprise that was, has significantly impacted my life. I first met some of my current OU colleagues in the hall outside my office in El Paso, Texas in 2009, 11 years ago. It was in that accidental encounter with their site visit team that I learned that OU was planning to establish a four-year medical school right here in Tulsa. Made me go, hmm. And here I am, back in Oklahoma, where I intend to stay. My final examples are about discovery. In 1889, Oscar Minkowski removed pancreases from healthy dogs in order to study the organ's role in digestion. To his surprise, the dog's urine attracted flies. So Minkowski then tasted the urine, which I personally find not just surprising, but shocking, and he found that the urine was sweet. That surprise was what connected the pancreas to diabetes mellitus and ultimately led to the discovery of insulin. In 1928, when Alexander Fleming noticed a mold had grown in one of his culture dishes and the bacteria around the mold were dead, he was surprised. That surprise led to his discovery of penicillin. Finally, all of us have been surprised by the COVID-19 pandemic and its consequences. Surprises and serendipity like these examples usually play key roles in discovery. Unfortunately, surprises are often ignored. Maybe it's because they seem trivial or they're confusing or they happen too quickly, or maybe people are simply busy and don't have time to think about it. But surprises often point to something that is worth learning about. You have probably heard the expression, we don't know what we don't know. Well, surprises can help us recognize what we don't know. Perhaps a surprise may lead you to correct a misdiagnosis or lead you to a new medical discovery, or perhaps reflecting on surprises will simply help you become a better person or bring you joy. So, these are the challenges I would like to give to each of you today. Number one, grow where you're planted. Number two, choose a positive attitude. Number three, take care of yourselves and your loved ones. And number four, stop and reflect when you encounter surprises. There's nothing new or magical in these words and they will not guarantee you freedom from adversity, but I believe these ideas will provide tools that will help bring you peace and happiness. As you enter into the profession of medicine by donning a hood for the first time and reciting the Hippocratic Oath, you will become a part of a tradition that goes back many years. It is a well-earned recognition and you have my heartiest congratulations and best wishes for the future. I know that it has not all been fun, but nothing worthwhile is easy. The next phase of your training will test and exhaust you, but never forget why you did this in the first place. So when exhaustion and sleep deprivation are sucking the empathy out of you, fight it with smiles. Fight it by choosing to be happy where you are. Misery is optional. Finally, please don't forget us and your alma mater. And when your alma mater comes knocking at your door to ask for help, including money, it is our hope that you will greet us warmly, especially after you've paid off your loans. So good luck and Godspeed to you all. At the School of Community Medicine commencement ceremony, we have a tradition of the student address. 
selected by her classmates to offer some final thoughts and words of gratitude on their behalf, is Ekina Ezenwa. Ekina grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and attended the University of Oklahoma Norman, where she graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in Health and Exercise Science. She worked as an AmeriCorps teaching fellow in East Boston before entering the School of Community Medicine in 2016. During medical school, Ekina has been an outstanding community leader for all four years. She was accepted as an Albert Schweitzer Fellow during her second year and created leadership development workshops for local high school students. She led and served as a leader in multiple student organizations. She was chosen by her faculty for the Daniel Duffy Leadership Award in 2019, an award given to one student per year for showing a devotion to a career that will use a medical approach to solve the social problems of community medicine. Akena was further honored for her achievements with the Charles James Bate Memorial Award in 2017, the Winesbury Scholarship in 2017 and 2018, and the Diane Heaton Professionalism Award in 2019. Additionally, she has completed several research projects at the School of Community Medicine and working in partnership with researchers at NYU and Johns Hopkins University. We are delighted that she will be completing her preliminary year at the Internal Medicine Residency Program at the School of Community Medicine in Tulsa and then continuing as a dermatology resident at the University of Chicago. Hello class of 2020. I am so excited to be your student speaker for our virtual graduation. Unfortunately, I was told I can't do a six minute row session, so prepare for this to be sentimental and borderline sappy. If listening to me on a computer screen feels too bizarre, feel free to channel your inner medical student one last time and just put me on two speed. As we all know, the word of the year is unprecedented. This was not how we were supposed to finish medical school. We were supposed to have a match week, celebrate at the awards banquet with the good food and drinks, and walk across the stage one by one in our gorgeous tams. Big shout out to Chelsea and Mitchell for leading that campaign. However, we take this adversity in stride. And even in the midst of pandemonium, we should all be so proud of what we've accomplished. Personally, I've been fortunate enough to take this time of social distancing to slow down and re reflect on the past four years. Hopefully, I can share some of those thoughts with you today. First, there are huge thank yous to be given to the faculty who mentored and inspired us, to student services who held our hands and cheered us on every step of the way and had excellent candy options in their office, to Dean Hayes, Dean Herman, and President Schumann who fostered a learning environment that allowed us to grow and prepare to take on the challenges of today. Lastly, to each of our support systems, many of whom are sitting on the couch to us right now, ready to do the hooding honors. Y'all put up with some craziness. Classmates, please take a moment to thank them again for how much they've supported you. I'm giving a personal shout out to my parents, to my mom who heard all about medical school, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and to my dad, also an OU Tulsa graduate, and my guardian angel every step of the way. Thank you. When I was in fourth grade, I had to write a story called In 20 Years. We had to use our nine-year-old imaginations and predict what our futures would be like. So of course, I wrote about how I was going to go to the University of Oklahoma for medical school, become a pediatrician, and quote, earn a lot of money by telling kids that they had strep throat. I'm not even kidding. I didn't elaborate on the details of how I was going to get there, but I was speaking my childhood dreams with faith and confidence. A confidence similar to what you may have had when applying to OU, knowing that you were going to be a physician, even without knowing all the details of what medical school would entail. And the journey was hard. During our first orientation, we were told that medical school is like drinking a glass of water full of knowledge, except the glass of water is actually a fire hydrant and you're using one of those little coffee stirrers as a straw. We stressed, we cried, we said finals week calories don't count, except we said it all semester. But we also passed, we celebrated, and we began the first step in our careers as physicians. We learned skills from one another, like to chill out a little more like Celeb, keep reading new journal articles like Sonia, and to reach for our dreams like Double Derm Mosin. Our support systems expanded and we began to take care of one another. I know I wouldn't be here without my girl gang group text, regular game nights, and texting a couple of y'all. So what exactly is gonna be on this test? 
Our experiences didn't end there. We also saw the injustices that our society puts on the most vulnerable. We deepened our understanding of the mission of the School of Community Medicine, and we served the city of Tulsa. It is fair to say that 27-year-old Ekena understands a little bit more about what it means to be a doctor than nine-year-old Ekena did. But something about her 20-year plan worked, so I'd like to speak some things into existence for you all over the next 20 years. I don't think my words cast any sort of magical power, but there's definitely power in setting your intentions and reflecting upon them. One, you'll always be learning. Medical school fatigue was real, and some days I thought, why am I even doing all this? But there's always something new to learn, and you never know who you might save in the process. Two, you will understand that service is a form of love. Bring the knowledge of community medicine to your future residency programs and practices. Be someone's mentor. Remember the barriers you face to get to this point and help others overcome them. Toni Morrison said, I get angry about things, then go on and work. I know you have seen the exposed cracks of our social system. You will get angry and you'll get to work. Three, you will have fun. Take time to treat yourself well and treat yourself often. Buy that video game, take that vacation, find whatever makes you happy outside of medicine. Four, you will, you will wear sunscreen with an SPF at least 30 every day. As a future dermatologist, this one's slightly biased, but trust me, you'll thank me in like 20 years. Lastly, you will be, as the word of the moment says, unprecedented, but in a good way. I wish you the best of luck on your next endeavors. Thank you, class of 2020, and congratulations. I will see you soon. Thank you, Ekena. At this time, Dr. Jean Hayes, Associate Dean of Student Affairs, will now read the names and short biographies of the graduating students. Thank you, Dean Herman. It is my pleasure to present to you the graduates of the class of 2020. Jeremy Byer. Jeremy is the son of Jerry and Tammy Byer of Tulsa, Oklahoma. He graduated from Summit High School and received his undergraduate degree from Oral Roberts University. Jeremy, Jeremy will be moving back to Kansas City, Missouri, where he will begin his residency in pediatrics at Children's Mercy Hospital. Saba Benjaber. Saba was born in Sana, Yemen, and grew up in Edmond, Oklahoma. She is the daughter of Mohammed Benjaber, currently of Edmond, and Miriam Horebi of Yemen. She graduated from Edmond North High School and received her undergraduate degree from the University of Oklahoma. Saba will be returning to the Oklahoma City area where she will begin her residency in internal medicine at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center in Oklahoma City. Emily Bolander. Emily is the daughter of Linda Kay and Robert Estes of Fort Worth, Texas. She graduated from R.L. Pascal High School and received her undergraduate degree from the University of Oklahoma. Emily and her husband, Gabriel, will continue to live in Tulsa with their newborn, da newborn daughter, Caroline, where she will begin her residency in pediatrics at the University of Oklahoma School of Community Medicine. John Caradini. John is the son of, jo of George and Casey Caradini of Tulsa, Oklahoma. He graduated from Union High School and received his undergraduate degree from the University of Arkansas. He also earned a Master of Public Health degree from the University of Oklahoma while a medical student. John and his wife, Kaylin, will continue to live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where he will begin his residency in internal medicine at the University of Oklahoma School of Community Medicine. Iman Wasim Chaudhry. Iman is the daughter of Wasim Fuzzle and Noma Chaudhry of Edmond, Oklahoma. She graduated from Edmond North High School and received her undergraduate degree from the University of Oklahoma. She will continue to live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where she will begin her residency in internal medicine at the University of Oklahoma School of Community Medicine. Hannah McKenzie Estes. Hannah is the daughter of Warren and Diane Estes of Claremore, Oklahoma. She graduated from Claremore High School and received her undergraduate degree from Oklahoma Baptist University. Hannah and her husband, Matthew Dunham, will be moving to Memphis, Tennessee, where she will begin her residency in pediatrics at the University of Tennessee Health Sciences Center. Ekena Andrea Azenwa. Ekena is the daughter of Dr. Emeka Azenwa and Dr. Nnedi Azenwa of Nigeria, currently of Tulsa, Oklahoma. She attended Bishop Kelly High School and received her undergraduate degree from the University of Oklahoma. Ekena will be moving to Chicago, Illinois, where she will begin her residency in dermatology at the University of Chicago. Amanda Watson Gibson. 
Amanda is the daughter of Sarah Watson and the late Jamie Watson of Tulsa, Oklahoma. She graduated from Jenks High School and received her undergraduate degree from Oklahoma State University. She also earned a Master of Public Health degree from the University of Oklahoma prior to entering medical school. Amanda and her husband Garrett will continue to live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where she will begin her residency in internal medicine at the University of Oklahoma School of Community Medicine. Mosin Said Gill. Mosin is the son of Hamid and Shanaz Said of Punjab, Pakistan, currently of Tulsa, Oklahoma. He graduated from Union High School and received his undergraduate degree from the University of Oklahoma. Following his internal medicine preliminary year at the Oklahoma University Health Sciences Center in Oklahoma City, Mosin will be moving to New Haven, Connecticut, where he will begin his residency in ophthalmology at Yale University. Corey Horowitz. Corey is the son of Stuart and Susan Horowitz of Wellington, Florida. He graduated from Trumbull High School and received his undergraduate degree from Cornell University. Corey and his wife Catherine will be moving to Hollywood, Florida, where he will begin his residency in psychiatry at Memorial Healthcare System. Daniel Huff. Daniel is the son of Drs. John and Deborah Huff of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. He graduated from Deer Creek High School and received his undergraduate degree from Oklahoma State University. He also earned a Master of Public Health degree from the University of Oklahoma while a medical student. Daniel and his wife Stacy will be moving to Phoenix, Arizona, where he will begin his residency in internal medicine at the Mayo Clinic School of Graduate Medical Education. Stuart Andrew Jack. Stuart is the son of Stanley and Christina Logan of Tulsa, Oklahoma. He graduated from Casha Hall Preparatory School and received his undergraduate degree from Oklahoma State University. Stuart, his wife Jessie, and their children Jared and Julian will continue to live in Tulsa, where he will begin his residency in internal medicine at the University of Oklahoma School of Community Medicine. Caleb Koslowski. Caleb is the son of Shauna Gibson of Beaver, Oklahoma. He graduated from El Dorado High School in El Dorado, Kansas. He received his undergraduate degree from Southeastern Oklahoma State University. Caleb and his fiance Amanda Michener will be moving to Minneapolis, Minnesota, where he will begin his residency in psychiatry at the University of Minnesota Medical School. Mitchell McCain. Mitchell is the son of Mark and Cindy McCain of Denver, Colorado. He graduated from Faith Christian Academy and received his undergraduate degree from Oral Roberts University. Mitchell will continue to live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where he will begin his residency in general surgery at the University of Oklahoma School of Community Medicine. Chelsea McKenzie. Chelsea is the daughter of Shayla and Bruce McKenzie of Tulsa, Oklahoma. She graduated from Bishop Kelly High School and received her undergraduate degree from Oklahoma State University. Chelsea and her husband, Alan Ridgway, will be moving to Birmingham, Alabama, where she will begin her residency in anesthesiology at the University of Alabama Medical Center. Nicholas Morgan. Nick is the son of Darren Morgan and Christy Jardo of Bartlesville, Oklahoma. He graduated from Bartlesville High School and received his undergraduate degree from the University of Oklahoma. Nick will be moving to Denver, Colorado, where he will begin his residency in internal medicine at the University of Colorado School of Medicine, Denver. Jonathan Namias. Jonathan is the son of Mark Namias of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Sally Schuster of El Paso, Texas. He graduated from Union High School and received his undergraduate degree from Northeastern State University. Jonathan and his wife, Madeline Gonham will be moving to Durham, North Carolina, where he will begin his residency in psychiatry at Duke University Medical Center. Sonia Narula. Sonia is the daughter of Raj and Rajesh Narula in, of Edmond, Oklahoma. She graduated from Edmond North High School and received her undergraduate degree from the University of Oklahoma. Sonia will be moving to Salem, Virginia, where she will begin her residency in internal medicine at Lewis Gale Medical Center. Madeline O'Sullivan. Maddie is the daughter of Tim and Melissa O'Sullivan of Tulsa, Oklahoma. She graduated from Booker T. Washington High School and received her undergraduate degree from Duke University. Maddie and her husband, Mark Hayes, will be moving to Salt Lake City, Utah, where she will begin her residency in internal medicine at the University of Utah Health. Elise Paracha. Elise is the daughter of Dr. Mohammed and Mrs. Asma Intakahab Paracha of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. She graduated from Cassidy School and received her undergraduate degree from the University of Oklahoma. Elise and her husband, Shanawazi Jaws, will continue to live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where she will begin her residency in pediatrics at the University of Oklahoma School of Community Medicine. V Pham. V is the daughter of Tai Pham and Nok Nguyen of Tulsa, Oklahoma. She graduated from the Oklahoma School of Science and Mathematics and received her undergraduate degree from the University of Oklahoma. 
Bea and her husband, Anthony Tran, will be moving to Aurora, Colorado, where she will begin her residency in internal medicine at the University of Colorado, Denver. Eric Lee Reynolds. Eric is the son of Larry and Suzanne Reynolds of Wichita, Kansas. He graduated from Northeast Magnet High School in Wichita, Kansas and research, received his undergraduate degree from Wichita State University. Eric and his wife, Min Trang Q, and their children, Dagny and Solomon, will be moving to Norman, Oklahoma, where he will begin his residency in psychiatry at Griffin Memorial Hospital. Joshua Caleb Shabande. Caleb is the son of Norik and Michelle Shabande of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. He graduated from Union High School and received his undergraduate degree from the University of Oklahoma. He also earned a Master of Public Health degree from the University of Oklahoma prior to entering medical school. Caleb will be moving to Kansas City, Kansas, where he will begin his residency in general surgery at the University of Kansas Medical Center. Helga Christine Skaftison. Helga is the daughter of Johan Skaftison and Anna Helga daughter of Tulsa, Oklahoma. She graduated from Jinx High School and received her undergraduate degree from the University of Oklahoma. She also earned a Master of Public Health from the University of Oklahoma while a medical student. Helga will continue to live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where she will begin her residency in family medicine at the University of Oklahoma School of Community Medicine. Fisher Maher Swar. Fisher is the son of Maher and Rhonda Swar of Damascus, Syria, now Tulsa, Oklahoma. He graduated from Peace Academy and received his undergraduate degree from Northeastern State University. Fisher will be moving to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, where he will begin his residency in internal medicine at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. Victoria Lane Thomas. Victoria is the daughter of Dr. Gary Thomas of Owasso, Oklahoma, and Mrs. Cheryl Thomas of Locust Grove, Oklahoma. She graduated from Broken Arrow High School and received her undergraduate degree from Oklahoma State University. She earned a Master of Public Health degree from the University of Oklahoma while a medical student. Victoria and her husband, Sean Singleton, will be moving to Boston, Massachusetts, where she will begin her residency in anatomical and clinical pathology at Brigham and Women's Hospital. It's been my pleasure to recognize the graduates in the class of 2020. I wish you the best of luck in all your future endeavors. To authorize the awarding of the degrees today, it is now my pleasure to recognize Gary Pearson, a regent of the University of Oklahoma. By the powers vested in me by the University of Oklahoma Board of Regents, the State Regents for Higher Education, and laws and statutes of State of Oklahoma, I authorize the President to award degrees at the 2020 commencement. Members of the class of 2020, you have satisfied all of the requirements and obligations imposed by the faculty for graduation from the College of Medicine. Acting now on their recommendation and by the authority vested in me by the University of Oklahoma Board of Regents and the Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Medicine and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities associated with the degree. Traditionally, students are distinguished as a Doctor of Medicine by having a doctoral hood placed over their head by the Dean or designated guest hooder. While we are unable to perform this part of the ceremony in person, Students will still be able to participate in this meaningful rite in their own homes, being hooded by a member of their own household. This will be shared in a virtual format immediately following this broadcast. Graduates of 2020, one of the medical profession's most important, honored, and noble traditions is the taking of an oath at the time of graduation from medical school. Let me take a moment to provide a brief explanation of the Hippocratic Oath. The Hippocratic Oath is an oath historically taken by physicians and is one of the most widely known of Greek medical texts. In its original form, the Hippocratic Oath required a new physician to swear by a number of healing gods, such as Apollo, Hygieia, and Panacea, to uphold specific ethical standards. The Hippocratic Oath is the earliest expression of medical ethics in the Western world, establishing several principles of medical ethics that remain of significance today. These include the principles of medical confidentiality and non-maleficence, the latter usually meaning first do no harm. Swearing to a modified form of the oath remains a rite of passage for medical graduates in many countries. Following this recorded ceremony, I will ask the class of 2020 to stand in their homes virtually during a Zoom meeting in the presence of your faculty, family, and friends and take the oath for the profession of medicine. This portion of the ceremony will take place in the 
in a live virtual ceremony, but will have no less meaning. To all in our audience, we thank you for being a part of this special occasion, this special day. We hope that you will all join us for the live virtual portion of this ceremony. Information about how to watch will be available on the screen as our broadcast ends. Class of 2020, you came to medical school full of aspirations and dreams. The faculty and I truly hope that those aspirations and dreams have been realized. We hope that you have come to understand the necessity of lifelong learning, the meaning of professionalism, and the special bond between patient and physician. The OUTU College of Medicine School of Community Medicine is a special place, a place where your lives have been transformed and made richer. In years to come, you will find that memories will always tie you to this institution, to this place, to those who have taught you, and to those who have nurtured, shared, and encouraged your dreams. Take what you have learned here and excel in your residency training. Have pride in your medical school and in your medical education, just as we have pride in you. Stay connected as interested and active alumni of the School of Community Medicine. You go forth from this place into a world that greatly needs your idealism, your energy, your skills, and your courage. We believe in you. Our best wishes go with you. We are happy and proud today to call each of you doctor. You are a class of extraordinary men and women that I welcome as colleagues in this marvelous profession of medicine. And please know that as your dean, I am extremely proud of you. Well, here we go. It's wonderful to be joining all of you today in this virtual format to further recognize all of you, group of esteemed graduates. A year ago, we had our first live graduation of the School of Community Medicine for students who had spent all four years in Tulsa. It was the first time we had done that and we were pretty proud of ourselves to have pulled that off so well. And now we're very proud to be saying in our second graduation that we will have pulled off a virtual graduation with all of the pomp and circumstance that this sort of event deserves and all graduates that you deserve. The, the academic regalia that you're wearing is a tradition that goes back many centuries. And the donning of a hood for those who earn an advanced degree is thought to go all the way back to the Middle Ages. It's a great honor to wear a long hood. And as the hood is placed over your head, I know that each of you as our graduates will reflect on the hard work and many years of learning that have led to the moment where this happens. I also hope that you'll look forward to a lifetime of continued learning because that is what our profession of medicine demands of us. I'm now gonna ask Dr. Jean Hayes to name each graduate once again individually as they are hooded by a loved one in their homes. Dr. Hayes. Thank you, Dean Herman. Dr. Jeremy Beyer. <laughs> Yay, Jeremy! <laughs> Dr. Saba Benjaber could not be here today. We're gonna to move on. Dr. Emily Bolander. Yay. Dr. John Caradini. Yeah. 
Hey, John. <laughs> Dr. Iman Wasim Chaudhry. Can you see us? Nope, just me. Okay. Just check. There you go, Dr. Iman Wasim Chaudhry. Dr. Hannah McKenzie Estes. <laughs> Dr. Ekana Andrea Izenwa. <laughs> Dr. Amanda Watson Gibson. Dr. Mosin Saeed Gill. <laughs> Dr. Corey Horowitz. <laughs> Dr. Daniel Huff. <laughs> Dr. Stewart Andrew Jack. Hey, turn around and then after she has me turn the camera. My mom and I will hug and <laughs> Dr. Caleb Koslowski. Dr. Mitchell McCain. Dr. Chelsea McKenzie. <laughs> Dr. Nicholas Morgan. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Dr. Jonathan Nemias. Dr. Sonia Narula. <laughs> Dr. Madeline O'Sullivan. <laughs> Dr. Elise Paracha. <laughs> Dr. V. Pham. <laughs> Dr. Eric Lee Reynolds. Dr. Joshua Caleb Shabande. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Helga Christine Skaftison. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Bisher Maher Swar. So proud of you. Dr. Victoria Lane Thomas. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. Great job. Oh, that's right. Uh, someone in the room, and I believe we're ready for the oath now. All right. I'm not seeing you on my screen, so that's what I was waiting for. Okay. We're all set. We're ready. All right. And graduates, doctors. Invite out. Yeah. Okay. What's I that? The oath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's no, I'm, I'm not you can use that. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got it. I can hold it. Okay. 
Uh, the, it's somebody uh, the pedagogy, yeah. Here, I'll do you wait to redo it. <laughs> yeah, we're unmuted. No, we're unmuted. unmuted. All right, is everybody ready? Right. Oh, I'm muted. Sir. <laughs> Doctors, please stand where you are to take the oath of profession of medicine while your faculty, family, and friends. Please repeat after me. Upon being granted admission to the profession of medicine, I solemnly swear by all that I hold most sacred that I will keep this in mind. I saw I pledge to devote my life to the service of humanity. To the best of my ability and judgment, to help the life of my patients. To the best of my ability and judgment, I will lead my life and practice medicine conscientiously. I will lead my life and I will abstain from eating whatever is deleterious and mischievous. I will abstain from eating whatever is deleterious and I will hold in confidence all that my patients trust and share with me. I will hold in confidence all that my patients trust and share with me. I will not permit consideration of race, religion, nationality, politics, or social standing. I will I will not, not permit consideration of respect and gratitude to those who taught me the science and the art. I will share my knowledge. Integrity and noble traditions of the medical profession. These promises I make freely and upon my honor in the presence of those here assembled. These promises I make freely and upon my honor in the presence of those here assembled. May happiness and good repute be granted to me while I keep myself in my Congratulations, doctors. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Very proud to welcome you into the profession. <laughs> this concludes our 2020 commencement ceremony. I think we've done pretty well given the circumstances and once again. A quick touch on you. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day, doctors. <laughs> Welcome up.